Hey guys, welcome back to How to Roll Dice. I'm Josh, and today I wanted to take a quick look at Time Stories by Space Cowboys. Time Stories is an interesting game that has two to four players taking on the role of time agents traveling backwards and forwards through time, attempting to undo and stop these epoch events that are being triggered by some big bad behind the scenes. These events are causing ripples through space time and are slowly going to undo reality if they can't be put to an end. So you and the other players are basically going to various locations throughout history and other histories, uh, and even future futures, uh, almost in a multiverse sense, to try to stop these things from happening and understand who's behind them. Let's go ahead and throw the scoreboard up on the screen here and start with theme and immersion. This game is extremely thematic and immersive. It basically plays like a video game, and let me explain what I mean there. This is the base box. It comes with one mission called Asylum. You'll be playing in a 1920s French insane asylum. Once you finish that mission, there are all of these separate missions, expansions that you can buy. And the way it works is you can basically take one of these missions, completely new, a uh, new style of gameplay, new setting new theme written by a completely different author and plug that into this base box and play it on this board. And so you go from your 1920s horror game to your 1990s zombie game, and then your D&D style fantasy game, and then your Egyptian mystery game, and then your Arctic HP Lovecraft game, and on and on and on. And so you've got this sort of gaming console that you can plug different cartridges into and constantly play new games. Uh, and I'll touch on why there's a flaw in that in a minute. But thematically, even on the board, it's got some video game style designs. It's very, very visual. When you take location cards out of this pre-built location deck, it's almost like a legacy deck. You don't shuffle it, you don't look at it. Same with this item deck, only when you're told to. You take locations out of this deck and you lay them out in a very specific order. They actually create a panoramic image that you and the other players have to look at and examine and try to see what's going on there. And then you move your player pawns around to say where you want to be standing in that scene to interact with your captain or this engineer over here at the time pods or that technician over there in the hallway. And then you flip the cards over and you reveal what's actually going on in the scene in that spot. You learn that information, you can share it with the other teammates if you want. It's very quickly immersive in pulling you into this setting because you're looking at it. You're like being pulled right into it visually. Um, the different player characters that you're actually playing as, which are unique to every mission, uh, because when your agents go back in time, they're not just themselves walking around in a spacesuit. That would be a little obvious. They actually kind of like mentally embody these vessels of people that are living in that setting at that time. So in the Insane Asylum, you've got a World War One veteran with a half blown off face and PTSD. You've got a murder psychopath, you've got an elderly nun, you've got a 12-year-old girl who likes to eat people, um, you know, your typical crew, and you're going to be embodying them. So you're dealing with their stuff while also dealing with the mission stuff. So like you're dealing with your PTSD that's interfering with your ability to make skill checks because you're trying to solve the mystery that you're here to solve as an agent. But because you're in this guy's body, you've got to deal with his stuff. It's very immersive. It's very visual. It pulls you in. You've got this mini map up here in the left corner, which is called the plan, but it's literally a mini map. It's a top down blueprint of the asylum with all of the grounds around it. And you're moving this group pawn around on it to determine what location in the asylum that you're in. And then you go to that location set in this deck, you lay it out in front of you and boom, you've got another panoramic visual of exactly what you see in that room to interact with. Oh, I'm going to go to talk to this nurse over here. I'm going to talk to that patient on this bed. I'm going to see if this cabinet's unlocked. It looks like it might have some goodies inside of it. I'm going to come help you because I actually have that crowbar that we found in the other room. Maybe I can help you pry it open and then you reveal sometimes you find bad guys sometimes you find horrible mysteries and you're exploring this asylum or whatever setting trying to figure out what's going on what's the epoch event here that somehow caused all these ripples in time um it's a really really good system it's really visual it's really immersive solid too moving on from that it's all downhill from here unfortunately so moving on from that we've got uh cost versus quality this base game is about $50, $60, depending on where you buy it. It comes with the one story, Asylum. You're going to play through Asylum in a single session. It's not like a long game. It's a two or three hour playthrough, depending on how you do. And I'll touch on that in a minute. Um, and then you're done with Asylum. You can't play it anymore. You know the whole story. You know how to beat it. You know when to turn left, when to turn right. Don't talk to that Marsh. She's a psychopath. She's going to stab you with the syringe. Go down that hallway, but don't step on that panel because that's a trap door that opens up to spikes. You know all the tricks. And so Asylum is done. You've spent your 50 bucks, your 60 bucks, you're done. Now you go spend 20, 25 dollars on the Marcy case and you've got yourself, you know, your 1990s murder mystery, sorry, 1990s zombie mystery in Seattle. Cool. 25 bucks. We play through that one sitting. Now we're done that. All right, we go spend another 25 bucks on a Prophecy of Dragons. Then we finish that in a night, and then we go on to Under the Mask. 
We finish that a couple weeks and you just, you keep, I say a couple weeks, a couple weeks out. It's one sitting per thing. It's like two or three hours. Um, and you keep going through these. So if you've bought everything that I've bought here, which is all the expansions except for one, granted we've never even played the last two, plus the base game, it's like $225, $250. Uh, and it's only one, one play each. You can't even share it with new groups of friends because you'll know what's going on. So it's no fun for you. Plus, if you don't give them all the clues, you're just watching them like have a struggle fest as they get through this game. So replayability is like zero for how well designed the game is. The amount of money you have to spend on it just to play it a handful of times. The cost versus quality just bottoms out. So big zero for cost versus quality. Moving on to ease of use. Here's the second major flaw. Much like a video game, as I earlier described it, um, when you die in this game, if you go down the wrong hallway and you run into a spiked wall or you get stabbed by the crazy nurse or the mutants come out of the basement and eat your face, you have to reset the game. Much like a video game, you have to kind of try again from the beginning. Except in a video game, you can hit the restart button or you can just reload your most recent save file and like, boom, you're up and running. You come across a, a dialogue scene or a cut scene that you've already watched, you just smash the A button and get through it so you can get back to having fun playing the game. With a board game, you have to manually reset all of the pieces. All of the location cards have to go back into the location deck in the right order or else it's not gonna work correctly. All of the item cards have to go back into the item deck in the right order. All of your pieces need to be put back to wherever they're supposed to start. All of the tokens pushed off to the side, the mini map, the plan reset with any upgrades that you've made to it with new details on it. Those are gone again. Sometimes they're not, but a lot of times they are. Um, and then you start the whole mission again from the beginning. And you can't mash the A button to skip through dialogue and cutscenes. You have to replay through. All right, go to room one. Uh, you talk to the nurse. She had the clue about the thing. I'm going to go over to the drawer and get the flask. All right, we need that for when we go find the janitor. Okay, now go. Let's go here. You talk to the janitor. There's a mutant over here. I know how to beat him. I have the, the shotgun. All right, I'll take care of that. And you have to walk through the entire game again to get back where you were so that you can get back to having fun. And then 10 minutes later, you make another mistake and it's another reset. Okay, put all the tokens back, put this back in the thing, reset those. Okay, move the mini map. All right, pawns back to where they were. Okay, room one, you talk to the nurse. I get the flask out of the thing. You, and you just have to do that over and over three or four or five times to get through a mission. Because even if you're paying close attention to all of these visuals, and even if you're trying to be strategic and tactical, there are some parts of these stories that are just completely random unless you wrote the story yourself. It's a guessing game. And unless you guess correctly, you're gonna fail the first couple of times because maybe there's two or three options and all of them seem equally plausible, but you pick the wrong one and you're dead. Reset everything, okay. You try the next one. Oh, dang, wrong, dead. Reset everything, you go back. Okay, well, there's only one left. You try it, all right, it works. 10 feet forward, okay, and pit in the floor, dead. All right, reset, try it. And so it's it's this constant co having to pause, stop all of the fun, reset the board, tedious, obnoxious. It's not good. So for ease of use, I'm gonna go zero. Having to constantly reset the game that you're playing on is not fun at all. Basically, imagine if we were playing the game, uh, playing a board game, any board game. I set up a board game. We all come over. We start playing. And then 20 minutes into the game, I just reach out and smash all the pieces off the table. And everybody's like, what the hell was that? And I go, oh, sorry, we got I got something wrong. We actually have to start over from the beginning. My bad. And everyone's like, OK, fine. We reset all the pieces. We play for another 20, 30 minutes. And I reach out and smash everything off the board again. And everyone's like, are you going to keep doing that? And I go, well, we had another thing wrong, so we, we have to start again from the beginning. And I just kept doing that. You'd leave after like the second time. You either leave or demand we played a different game. And this game asks you to do that three or four or five times to get through a single story. And then again, every time you want to play a different story because they're all like that. So that's a horrible mechanic. I'm going to say ease of use, zero. Uh, moving on to is it enjoyable? Well, as I just explained, at times, it's very enjoyable, but every 20 minutes when you're having to pause and reset the whole game, or maybe I'm exaggerating, saying, say it's uh, every half an hour and it takes an hour and a half, two hours to beat the game. That means four resets that elongates the game by almost an hour with all of the reset times. That's not fun. That's not enjoyable. Uh, the highlights of the game are good. The mystery, the, the trouble, the problem solving, the different uh, you know characters that you run into and the story itself, which is really well, well written. Uh, that's maybe worth a one, but it's certainly not going to get a two because that reset mechanic is atrocious. So we'll give it a one and that's gracious. And then teachable. It's actually relatively easy to learn. Um, you're going to be a little shocked by the rules when you first read them because the timing mechanic, which is another reason you can fail missions if you just run out of time, the very first thing you're going to think is, wow, that's not enough time. <laughs> like as soon as you're five minutes into the first game and you've taken a handful of actions and you see how fast that time marker is ticking down to zero, you're going to think, how are we supposed to get 
anywhere near the end of this mission. This doesn't make any sense. I would need 10 times that much time to beat this game. Um, and you do. The way it works is every time you fail a mission, they add more time to how much time you have to beat the mission uh, until eventually you can screw up enough and still pass uh, or still succeed. And so the rules aren't that hard. They're a little like odd at a glance, um, but the game's easy enough to learn. So I'll give it a two there. So looking back at the scoreboard, we've got a two, a zero, a zero, a one, and a two. This game is a five. Um, I really wouldn't recommend that you buy it, especially for how much it costs to have a, a decent amount of fun playing it a couple of times, how frustrating it can be to play with having to constantly reset the board. Uh, it's just there are there are much better options out there. Um, anywho, I hope you guys have enjoyed this review. I will see you soon. Have a good night.